Hello and welcome. In this section, we will be starting with our technical hands-on. Before that, we have to cover one important part, which is how the systems are set up on which we are going to perform our development or hands-on exercises and what is the functional scenario. So these are two important things which I would discuss in this particular section and then we will go ahead and do the practice for CDS views. So first let's talk about the technical setup of our systems. We have the system in Google Cloud Platform. These are development system. We have SAP NetWeaver 7.5 Service Pack 1 as a BAP and SAP BW on SAP HANA Service Pack S10 on Google Cloud Platform and um, this is a architecture what we have. We have the Eclipse and uh, we have the web ID. These two tools will be utilized. So if I go here, this is Eclipse Neon actually. So this is going to be in our development system. So I'll just draw a little outside. So here, this is our development system where we will be working with or developing the artifact. The Eclipse is Neon 3.0 and uh, it already have the ADT toolkits, the ABAP development toolkit, which you can download from tools.hana.ondemand.com and if you go in this particular URL, add it to Eclipse, then you can download all the plugins for development and we basically need a BAP plugin in our Eclipse for developing CDS view. So that is already done, which has been covered multiple times. So I'll not be covering how to set up those scenarios. And we have the web ID. The web ID can be the personal version or can be your commercial version, but we will be in the section going for the personal version of web ID. You can also use the cloud web ID as well. So this is the system setup. We have Eclipse Neon and we have the web ID. We will also have a logon GUI in our front end server where we will be able to access the gateway as well. So this will also connect with the gateway. So we have the front end GUI as well. So let me just write it SAP GUI front end and this GUI will be also connected to your gateway. Now the NetWeaver gateway is 7.5 service pack one and the database this time is HANA. We have used a similar setup. Everything is same. Previous time when we were working with Fury for developer course, the database was Sybase. In this case, it is SAP HANA service pack S10. So that's how the setup and architecture is. The HANA is connected to our Eclipse with our ADT tools. The Eclipse is also connected to the system, the gateway system or the SAP system. And um, the SAP system will be also connected to web ID. So that's the basic setup of our development architecture. And um, you can spin your own development system in your Google Cloud Platform, you will get the same thing. You don't have to do anything new. This is out of the box for user who want to develop and practice. So I will highly recommend to go with Google Cloud Platform or Amazon or Microsoft Azure and spin this machine, which will be available to you in cal.sap.com. Or you can also set up if you have the OS images. So these are development systems. So most of the standard functional use cases will not be available there. So keep in mind that standard tables like Mara, VBAC, VBAP or standard uh, function modules might not be available, but there is enough functionality available for you to practice and master the technology itself. Okay, so let's move on to the functional use case side, how we will be working with tables. What are those tables? So first we have SNW underscore SO. Okay, so now we have got a theoretical understanding of the system setup. Let's go and look from our own side how the systems are set up. So if we go here, this is basically the, the remote desktop, what you get as a development system. As you can see, it has the front end login pad. It has the Eclipse and also design studio within. And then when I go into Eclipse here, then it already comes with some connectivity established to your SAP system. Now, when it comes to SAP system itself, we'll log in and see what is the 
system components installed so let's log in and here inside system status we would be seeing that the HANA database and uh, this is the release and um, we also can see the product versions here we have gateway component as well and uh, the installed product version is nativer 7.5 so this is all the things which we have and uh, this will be enough for you to work with cds and explore it properly so let's go and understand now the functional scenario useful uh, now one thing is that if i want to do connection with your eclipse to the back end then i have to just double click in the connection and it will basically authenticate every time you start your eclipse so initially you can when you start to create the project then you will be basically connecting to the system okay so that's how the setup is now let's move on to the functional scenario so in the functional scenario we have um, snwd underscore so this is sales order header table now we have snwo underscore soi and it's d not o so snwd underscore so underscore i which is the line item for sales order then we have snwd underscore bpa which is the business partner data and um, now we have snwd underscore employees and there's a s which you cannot see but it is there so this is your employees data so all the employees data will be there so now how the relationship is there between the tables so there's a end to one relationship from uh, employee to business partner so employee basically maintain this business partner record so this is the second one which you will see here so snwd employee the key relationship is node key and in the business partner we have changed by so there will be a field in business partner called changed by which will be having your end to one relationship with your employee so employee basically maintains the business partner records so in the same case we have this third connection from sales order header to employees so if you see here employees there is node key again here and uh, here created by so we will have created by here and in employee we have node key and there can be multiple sales order which can be created by one single employee so this n is to one so this is actually header table so multiple sales order header and um, it will be a little surprising that why node key is there because this is a development system so most of the properties or fields are kept in mind for developers to do their work so uh, in standard systems you might have different fields there you might have ids there like sales order header number and those fields will be also present but the relationship between different tables are with node key parent key as you can see here in item we have parent key as well so these are the typical way of relationship or foreign key relationship between different tables and these are all client dependent tables so as a key you also have to mention the client number so let's move to this one this relationship between sales order header and business partner and uh, we have end to one relationships for multiple sales order head there will be one business partner and the relationship is basically node key in business partner and buyer guid in the header and in the fourth one we have sales order header and item number so both have one is to n this is quite famous which we'll be using a lot and um, we will be basically using the relationship from node key of sales order header and parent key in item this is the foreign key fields which we have okay so this is an overview you can also look into it if you go inside here and uh, 
going to this one table and this is the item table i can basically see this graphically inside and um, i can basically find the relationship between here and i can see the foreign key of both of this table and what is the linkage between this and here i can also see that how the relationship is one is to one one is to n and parent key relationship all can be identified from here this is actually s e11 transaction where i'm seeing this transparent table okay so this is the architecture let's go in eclipse and start writing our first cds views in the next section okay so let's start the development the first step we will be doing is creating a new project and this will be basically a BAP project let's select the system here that we were as a BAP and this is the name of the system which we have and uh, this is the details of the system as you can see here this is basically the domain name you can have your server IP as well and the system ID has been automatically taken up and um, I need to basically provide my username and password and um, let's finish it so we have the favorite where we have dollar temp as a local repository where we will be creating the core data services so this is the project so let's try to create our first CDS view and I will be basically writing it with SQL I will say new and I will go into a BAP repository object as the CDS view will be going inside the BAP repository I'll say core data and um, data definition now there will be some different ways where you can select the code which comes out as soon as the CDS views are created for you to start programming before that i will have to give the package stamp and here the name say z demo join zero one and uh, demo view one and um, here the next if you basically mention here some package then this cds view will be going inside a transport request as i have mentioned their dollar temp so it basically takes them as local objects so now this is the templates which i was talking about you can use predefined templates to start from some place and not from scratch now it depends upon what is your preference but template will always help you to start from certain position and not really start from scratch for people who are really afraid about typos in programming and in those set i also come where i am terrified of doing some mistake as a type or spelling mistake in the program templates can be extremely lifesaver in those situation where you start with some piece of code and not from scratch okay so let's start with view and uh, let's let's start with something very simple the first one define view let's try to use that and create this finish now we have this editor where if you have a syntax error then you can hover over here to understand what is the mistake to get a more detailed understanding or you can just press here to check development object as well now the first thing we will do here is uh, name the sql view differently so the name which we provided actually came here z underscore demo underscore join zero one this is the name of the view now we have to give the name of basically the sql view so z underscore view cds view and uh, i can say demo this shouldn't be more than 16 characters so if i give a little more character here then it will give me mistakes because uh, the maximum limit here is actually of 16 characters so we have to be careful about that the sql name 
Uh, now you can see that some of the syntax has been written in at the rate. They are annotations and we will basically see in details as well what are the functionality of annotation. In the beginning, we have two annotation to be focused on. The first is ABAP catalog SQL view name. So this basically takes the name of the view. So this is your view name. And the second is end user text dot label. So this annotation basically will contain what is the description we have given when we were creating this CDS view. Okay, so what we will be doing here is we will be using the connection between the table employees and um, your sales order header. And we will be trying to create our first CDS view with a inner joint and uh, here we have the node key and this node key will be related to your sales order header with created by so if we see the ER diagram again we have to go and see the ER diagram or the graphical representation for the relationship in the sales order header table here if you go into display and we see here then this is the link which we have to basically use and create an inner join. So the inner join will be returning the result which are present both in your employee and sales order header table. So let's try to do that. So first we will be using this table name and uh, the syntax is very simple. Define view, view name as select from and here we have the table name here SNW underscore SO. Now what we have to do next is we have to mention the second table with the inner joint keyword. So we will say inner join and uh, the second table name will be your employee table. So I will just get the name here employees and uh, copy it and we will be basically putting it here now once we say inner join then the second table is this we will have to do this inner join over a field or multiple fields but I will be basically doing it over one field on and uh, that field is going to be the node ID of your employee and uh, sales order header it will be created by and uh, if the created by as you can see here as soon as I enter full stop or dot here I get a search help and that is going to be very helpful in development with CDS views you will be able to get all the fields inside the table values and uh, you can use it in the program and not only this you can basically chain it as well for example if created by have a structure then I can even have a dot here and go inside that so that we will be seeing in coming few sections as well so here the second table name this can be structure as well, not only the table. So here the field is node key. Now what I would like to be present in this view, I will have to mention inside this bracket. So I will say sales order ID. So that is going to be one thing which I need. And I will be also going to have maybe some financial details cross amount and um, in the employees we will be going to have first name and uh, we will also have email address and also we will have the last name we can bring the last name just after first name and that's all so let's keep our structure 
with only these fields. And um, as you can see that if there is some syntax error, then we will have that particular highlighted. And here you can also see what is the error. We are missing a comma here. So once I add the comma, then everything is all okay. There's no error. And um, I will save it with Control S and go for activation here. Control F3 is the shortcut here to activate and uh, a few warnings, but no errors. To run it, to see the report, I will have to press F8 and uh, you can see the final output here. And um, we have the sales order ID, gross amount, first name, last name, and email address in a view which is built with Codata services. And this is also present inside a BAP repository. And now the view here is part of your dictionary, a BAP dictionary. So if I select the view name and I go to navigate and navigate to, or I just press F3, then I will be navigated to my SAP system where the structure I can see. So this is the cool part where I can see the view name. This is the view name which I have. And um, as you can see here, the name of the view which I gave here, SQL view name, is basically a dictionary structure, DDL SQL view, and the DDL source is this view. So if you are using this view again to create one more CDS view, which we will do in association as well, then I will be using this name, which is the view name. And if I'm using it inside or using it as a structure, then I will be using SQL view name here. So these are two different names. Now, this is something which we have not seen in our calculation or attributes or analytical view. Those were not part of the ABAP repository. The CDS views are part of ABAP repository. Now, if this is your first CDS view development, then I hope that you will be very happy to see your CDS view or a view inside your HANA database repository and um, we can do a lot of things once we have view present inside the BAP repository we can use it in a BAP programs we can use function or functionalities inside your CDS views to extract data and use it in a BAP program we can also expose the CDS views with annotation as a OData service which we will see in the coming section as well so this is the first part where we understood a basic CDS view creation. Now we will be seeing how to implement some of the advanced features in CDS views in the next section. So in the previous section, we created this CDS view and um, what the CDS view does, it is a simple inner join between employee and sales order header data. We also see in the system how the CDS view is present in SC11 transaction. What extra we can actually see is if I go into the CDS view name and I go to navigate and uh, navigate to, we will be able to see the SQL representation or the equivalent of this particular table creation. So if I go into menu, extras, and create statement, then it shows me a SQL syntax, which is equivalent of our CDS view, if I would like to create this table structure with SQL. Okay, so that is one extra thing in our extra. Now, what we will be doing in this section is I would be showing you that I can use the CDS view inside a BAP report to basically display the output, just a simple thing. But the point would be that you can use the CDS views inside your BAP report using OpenSQL. So I will be able to write select statements using these views and get the data inside a BAP program. And um, I will be not doing much, I will be just displaying the data, but once you get the data inside your BAP program, then you can basically do operations which are related to a BAP. Now, to do that, let's create a simple report. I will say new, a BAP program, and uh, let's name it Z. 
demo report 01 is already existing so we'll set it 02 demo so and employees and this is part of the temp package local object so i will not be having any transport here and let's finish it so that's the report now the first thing which we will be doing is defining a internal table and i will be saying so emp cds view and uh, here it will be a type standard table of our view which is this one and uh, let me close this too which we are not using i will be using this sql view name inside my bab program in the annotations what we have in the line number one now as this cds view doesn't have a key i have to mention with empty key i can also have in the definition itself of the cds view some field declared as key but um, i will do it later or we'll see that later now this is saved so i need to activate it let's come back to our report here and uh, once i do that i will be writing simple select statement and this select statement is open sql written in abap select star from our view name this is the view name into table and this is the table very simple so we are just kind of selecting all the data from the view cds view into the table and um, you can also use at the rate data if you have not defined the data if you have not declared it in the top then you can directly declare it with this syntax now i'm not going to basically use data here but i'm going to use at the rate as per the syntax now i will be calling a method inside the class cl underscore demo underscore output and uh, we will be using a static method called display inside this and the display basically takes two parameters one is data the other is name the data is the internal table and the name is a description and um, we'll be using that and uh, for us it will be exporting inside this particular report exporting and um, it will be data which is going to be the internal table and uh, we will be having the name as a description sales order and employees list that's all i think that's a simple report not be doing anything fancy the point is that we use open sql here and um, are able to basically get the data of cds view so this is the whole point of this particular simple report now let's activate it and once it's activated we'll be running it by pressing f8 and uh, it will take few seconds to give a output in a new pop-up window so let's wait for it now it took few seconds 10 to 15 seconds just to display this because what happens is the data actually get extracted and is written in this new window so it takes few seconds but we can see the final output of the data here in this new windows and this is our simple description now the whole point of creating this report is that with the open sql we will be having access to the cds where we can get the data and do our operation in a bap report we'll be seeing more about this as well we'll be using a lot of abap to use our cds views data as well just for now we will be working and uh, trying to see 
more functionalities which are exposed to us in the view creation phase in our CDS view. Welcome back. In the previous section, we started with the CDS view. We created the CDS views. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to basically try to add one more join here. And I will also introduce you to alias. So alias in the output. So these are all the elements, data elements, which will be exposed via the CDS view. We can also have alias in the select statement. So I can say select from SO, the sales order header table, as in WD underscore SO as some alias. And I can then use this alias everywhere instead of using this table name. So in this particular example, the table name are not that complicated. So we might not need alias most of the time. We do it for table name, which are complicated or hard to understand. Now also I can basically give a name to this particular field, which I am sending out as a structure or adding to the structure in this select. So I can also say as header item. So I can also do that. And uh, the column will be called header item in the final structure as well. So let's try to do that. First, I will try to do a additional inner joint in this particular structure. It's better to create a new structure. So basically, when I give you in the handbook, I can give you this example to practice as well. So let's try to create a new about repository object. I will basically follow the same steps core data services and here data definition z demo zero one we have so i will just say zero two z underscore demo underscore zero one underscore zero two and demo sales order we have e employee and uh, now we will be also adding the business partner here now this is going to be put in local object so i can directly finish not to go in the transport screen okay so now this is the code i can copy some part of the code here from here to here let's copy this and um, i will be putting it here select from so basically we have a header table we are joining with inner join so whatever common in both of these table will be actually displayed so if two tables are there and this has three fields and this has three fields only the fields which match with the criteria which i am showing here will be basically displayed in inner join now this should be coming first yeah this is coming first and then this is next now what I'm going to add is on top of this particular output, I will be having a left outer join. So what is a left outer join? For example, we are having a table and we are trying to put a left outer join to table two. Then all the fields in the first table, if they are found in the second table, then the join will happen. If based on the joining condition, of course, and if there is no match in the second table, then the first table data will be taken into output and the second table data will be null there. Basically, it will not be existing. So the left outer joint is done in a scenario where we have to have the left table data. And um, if some value we find from the right hand side table, then add it if the value doesn't exist then still add the left hand side value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say left outer join on table S. I will be taking example of business partner. I will be adding the table business partner here. Let's see what is the name of the table. 
snwd underscore bpa so let's come back here sn wd underscore bpa and uh, i will be saying on when my sales order is so there is a buyer id inside sales order header and uh, this buyer g uid global user and an id once this buyer g u id is equal to the business partner node key then do the left outer join and i will be saying node key so from the business partner table i will basically take the id of the business partner and um, maybe i can take one more field as well which is going to be maybe some field similar to created at um, maybe email address and um, i can also give it a alias in the output as the column name will be different here so business let's keep it small business underscore partner id and here i can also mention here as email so this is how the output name is changed this is somewhat readable the bp id is not unreadable but if you have some unreadable column types then you can give alias and the use of alias we will also see in the coming few section where they can be utilized as well now what is happening here just to see the output query here we have first a inner joint between our employee and uh, we are basically doing the inner join from the sales order header and employee table then that output will pass in and we will perform one more operation left outer join so whatever the output we have from this inner joint that will go on to a left outer join with our business partner so all the entry from this output table will be included in the final result and if we get some entries in the business partner then that will be combined based on this clause and uh, we will include these two fields okay let's try to activate this and see the final output so it's activated and let's try to run with f8 and you can see that we have the final output and um, email id of business partner is also there so these are all the final output now the operation which will be carried out here can also happen that the sequence of operation is first this where inner join will carry out and then your outer joint will be carried out from your result or you can say that it is happening directly with the sales order header table and your business partner now this can easily become complicated if we add more join and operation so we do have a functionality where you can visualize actually what you are trying to do for example if i open this with a graphical editor here then you will basically see that our sales order header is getting first the operation done with your employee table this Venn diagram shows that this is a inner joint only the result which are common in both of this table will be the part of the output and then we will have your result of the second operation with the left outer joint so whatever the result we have here this will be part of the left circle which is represented in this Venn diagram and um, if something get match with our 
other table, the second table, then based on the condition we have, then we include those records as well. And if it doesn't match, then still the first results will be coming out and uh, they will be put in the output as well. Now, functionally speaking, like which would be the scenarios where it can happen? Because most of this query will be regarding a functional use case which you would be implementing in real life. So we can have a situation where our application will only require sales order and from a sales order we need to show if there is a business partner involved in that sales order then give me the details business partner details is not mentioned then still i will need the sales order if the data is mentioned properly then you will have the business partner details but in situations or scenarios where those data are not present and i still need the sales order header information to be displayed or to be presented then these are the situation where we use the left outer join okay so this was a graphical editor to see what is happening here in our sql syntax when we write two joins in our cds view okay so we can also see this and um, i will be having a z name here just to make it different z demo sales order business partner and emp this should be less than 16 characters so that was the error why it was coming the name sql view name okay i will be navigating to this in my sap system so i will double click here and i will navigate to and um, i can also see the structure here now again from the menu from the extras i can see the create statement as well which will obviously be a little bigger than what we saw in the last part where it was only one single joint okay what we will be doing next is we will be going into association here now why association and where it is used and how it is different from a join so what happens is when you have two tables result it can be inner joint or left outer joint if we have those operation where we want to show the data combining the table multiple table based on the type of joint then we go for the sql joint here in cds view but normally in application you see that we have the sales order details and we press something a sales order number and then we are navigating to a business partner if that is uh, the feature to navigate to business partner if i want to see the business partner details associated with that particular sales order then that is where the association comes into picture it is used in navigation part in our application where you are consuming the data in such a way that you want to navigate to a particular information for example in this case it's sales order header if i only have a list of sales order header and by pressing on the sales order header i have options to see the item details or see the business partner information then the sales order header will have associations to your sales order item and business partner in the application that's how it's implemented and also if sometimes it becomes complicated to write multiple joins what we will see in association is it's very easier comparatively to writing the joins it's much easier to visualize what is happening because we can conceive the relationship between the joins and how the output will look like so there are two reasons why we use association first to use it as a navigation and also to write or combine table together which are a little easier than here join so let's go in the next section where we will be starting with simple association implementation with cds views